Howdy there once again, YouTube. How have you been? It has been a while. If you don't already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm all for the accurate and responsible seismic monitoring of Yellowstone, Long Valley Supervolcano, and other volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. If you haven't already, please go to my website. There's a link to it uh, right below my email address in the description box below. Go check it out. It can show you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS data now. And it also teaches you how to read the many different types of seismic plots and charts out there. Gets rid of a lot of the different misconceptions that are out there. Well, it addresses some of the misconceptions. But it also has hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images regarding many different seismic swarms and events. And I'm also working on a few other pages as we speak right now. I had to do this video because it's been a long time since I've done a video, guys. For me, at least. It's been a long time. Well, what, maybe five days or so. Sorry I've been gone, guys, but life is getting pretty busy and there are other priorities that are taking priority right now. But I just want to address a few things firsthand. First off, the real-time Tremor map right here at, let's see, tremor.pnsn, excuse me, .org slash real-time. I believe there is a link to this in the description box below under resources. Um, this is the hourly tremor map. It was showing an ETS tremor event. Of course, 10 hours in the past 48 hours is small. It has died down. The ETS event started right here. Started to head north a little bit. And I believe it started on March 11th. And right now is 12.08 p.m. March 19th, 2018. I believe it lasted a little bit less than a week. But very close to a week. Maybe five or six days or so. And it started up here. Started to head north a little bit. Then headed down. And then there were a few more down here but i don't think that's related could be something else maybe a fault moving or something i don't know but yeah we did have an ets episode it was small it did not last as long as some of the other episodes as you can see on the pnsn interactive tremor map now this is just like the real-time tremor map except this is not updated as much the real-time tremor map which is updated hourly can see some errors but when you see Hundreds upon hundreds of dots in a small area. Yeah, it's definitely not an error. Definitely something going on there. And also, here, check this out real quick. They have a movie. Now, this is from 2009, July 28, 2009 to October 29, 2013. So over three years, a good amount of time. Now, here, notice how 50, 50. This is going from south to north or from north to south. This is the same direction as it is showing right here. But the, all the red dots have been compiled, and this is time down here. So this is pretty much geographical location, vertically, and time down here. This is kind of like a plot, a type of plot. But while I press play, I want you to notice something. This is what the ETS Tremor episodes look like from 2009 to 2013. Look at how it moves, guys. Watch this. It looks like, like a kind of like a bomb going off and shockwaves going all around. But if you see, there are ETS episodes that were smaller than the one that we just saw in the past week. Whoops, I think my recorder just glitched out there for a second. But yeah, there were uh, many other small, small ETS episodes as you can see here. You can see many of the little teeny tiny guys. And these have already been confirmed by PNSN and compiled to make them. And look at this one. Wow. Let me go back for a second. Let me go back just for a second if it'll let me. Watch. Boom! Look at that! And it spreads to the north, west, and to the south as well. Now you may be scratching your head and wondering, what, what are you looking at? These are tectonic tremor events, slow slip events. that they, they say they are somewhat similar to volcanic tremor, but are always related to how the subduction zone uh, works. I, I really don't know too much about it, guys. There are still a lot of things I do not understand about it. And look, here comes another major episode right out here. Watch the map. Here it comes. Boom, 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 boom. Then calms down for a second. And then boom. Look at that. And this one was farther south and headed north. It is strange how the ETS tremor events move. Very strange how they react. And they're still learning about it, guys. They still don't know everything. So let's go to tremor frequently asked questions. Now, what is tremor in regards to the ETS tectonic tremor? Tremor is the seismic signature of a slow earthquake on the subducting plate interface. As the plates slowly slip past one another, they generate seismic noise that is quite different in its characteristics from normal earthquakes. They have lower frequency energy. Notice that. So it is a low frequency seismic tremor. 
Very interesting. So low frequency seismic tremor does not necessarily mean there is a volcano underneath your feet, guys. But the thing is, is if it's happening at Yellowstone or Mount Rainier, then yeah, obviously it's probably related to magmatic activity deep below the Earth. But here, when it's occurring on the Cascadia subduction zone and around no known uh, volcanoes at all, it's most likely related to the tectonic slow slip events. Again, they have lower frequency energy and can last for minutes, hours, or even weeks. Now, I thought Tremor was volcanic. And PNSN? Yeah. Add a T at the end. I thought volcanic Tremor was volcanic. <laughs> is this different? Yes, Tremor can be volcanic. But this is a new kind of signal that was only discovered in 2002. That's it. That's very young, guys. That's, that's not a lot of time for research, guys in Japan and has been subsequently identified in several subduction zones worldwide. These tremors are deep, non-volcanic signals associated with plate motion, not magmatic motion. But I believe these, uh, there are some similarities, uh, excuse me, some similarities, guys, to volcanic tremor and tectonic tremor. Because they said it does carry low frequency energy. It's a low frequency seismic tremor. Of course, it probably looks a little bit different. Um... So let's look at the, what the depths of these tremors are. This is a topic of ongoing research. We know that they occur deep, but the question is how deep? There are different bodies of evidence that suggest they occur at the plate interface as a direct result of the subducting plate grinding past the overriding plate, or they are spread out above the plate boundary, possibly occurring on faults that are readjusting in response to stress, stress changes excuse me, produced by the slow slip on the plate interface below. Now, what are the magnitudes of these tremors? Small. We don't currently compute magnitudes as part of our automatic processing, but the small amplitudes associated suggest magnitudes less than magnitude 2. So it's highly unlikely you will feel them. But, I must say but, there are a lot of people out there who get seasick very easily and who are very, very sensitive to very, very small vibrations. So I'm thinking, in most cases, you will not feel these. But in very rare cases, it is possible. I believe it is possible. But I don't know what it would feel like. I don't know what it would, if it would just feel like you're on the sea, just a slow back and forth motion. So yeah, I don't know. Now, I want to move on to something else just real quick. Here we are on my website. By the way, Steam Goat... Steam Goat? Man, I just cannot talk today, can I? <laughs> Steamboat Geyser erupted for the 10th time of 2019, which is also the 42nd time since Steamboat Geyser reactivated in early 2018. Now, this eruption was slightly larger. Again, it was larger than the last two eruptions, but it's still really, really small, guys. Note that this most recent eruption occurred in two parts, a main burst and then a long and drawn out increase near the end. This can be seen in the plots right here. Notice the main burst right here, and then you can see there's a secondary increase right there, but very tiny. I do believe Steamboat is nearing another low in activity, which has happened in the past. Regardless of this, it seems Steamboat is still very active and will likely erupt again in one week on March 24, 2019. This most recent eruption seems to have been about a day or so early, so stay tuned for more. Tenth eruption in 2019 occurred at 2054 UTC, March 17, 2019, which is also 254 PM Mountain Time, March 17, 2019. And here's a look at the 10th eruption of 2019, which again is the 42nd eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Again, I do believe Steamboat could be dying off for another big round of no activity, like it has in many decades before. But that has to, that, that remains to be seen, guys. I really think that it won't do that now. I think we could see, you know, another 20 eruptions. I would not be surprised. I mean, it might not, but it seems like Steamboat is not weakening each eruption. It seems like it is, and then it gets stronger, and then it gets weaker, and then it gets stronger. So this could be permanent. What if Steamboat Geyser is just active forever now? Because it used to be an active geyser and then an inactive geyser. An active geyser, inactive geyser. But you don't like Old Faithful. Old Faithful is always active. Always. It's always been active. So what if it turns into one of those permanently active geysers? That would be very interesting. I don't know why that would happen, but again, here it is. Dominant lower frequencies than what we have seen before when they were stronger. The dominant frequencies rested between 30 and 40 hertz. Now that they are weaker, it rests between 10 and 20 hertz. That's like a double drop. Guys, I, 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 that's very weird. I don't know why the frequencies would be dropping just because they're smaller, but I don't know.
Okay, so let's take a look at the recent earthquakes in the world. So, uh, as of 12.19 p.m. Pacific Time, March 19, 2019, let's zoom into Hawaii. Let's talk about Hawaii first. So, remember the magnitude 5.5 that recently occurred, and it looks like we have 12 earthquakes today. Seismicity has risen just a little bit, but ever since the magnitude 5.5, which, again, is the largest earthquake to occur at, in Hawaii since the eruptions calmed, which can be seen... On my recent blog post that I did on March 14th about the magnitude 5.5, showing a good amount of data pertaining to it. There's the location and some of the seismic stations in the areas. The magnitude 5.5 at the time of downloading this event page, which it was pretty late, so this is a pretty accurate count. That's the moment tensor. To me, it looks like it was some type of collapse event. That is my opinion. I may be wrong, but that is what I truly, truly believe. Over 1,953 people reported it, not just on the big island, but the entire island chain of Hawaii. Again, this magnitude 5.5 occurred on March 13th, 2019 at 1055 UTC and struck at 7.0 kilometers in depth. Now, this was not the only event to occur on this day. There were a few other tiny microquakes, but do you remember that blog post I did not too long ago about those strange, and I'm talking just strange, peculiar seismic events that were detected all across the big island of Hawaii? I mean, it wasn't just on one station, guys. It was on all of them. Every single station, basically, because of how deep it was. But I'm getting off topic. I'll show that in just a second. Um, there's the moment tensor again. I do believe it was a collapse event. After the earthquake, which occurred, I'm going to say, I believe it occurred right about here, I don't think this is it. I think this could be a calibration spike. I'm not sure, but this spike is showing on a lot of the tilt meters. Again, don't know what that was caused by, but afterwards, multiple tilt meters in the area detected increased, I believe, inflation. Yeah, the, I, I don't know, because this does not show up with, this shows the tilt of the ground. So I'm unsure which direction it's pointing. I believe that is signaling a little bit of inflation. It has stopped as of recently, and I'll show that in just a second. Here's the magnitude 5.5 and how it propagated away from the source. There it is. And this is the earthquake catalog proving that this magnitude 5.5 was by far the largest earthquake to occur on the Big Island since the 2018 eruption started to calm in early August 2018. And here are the seismic plots for that magnitude 5.5. Got some more plots there. There's some heli quarters, and that's it. Okay, so besides this, there was another smaller event that occurred. And it's something that I like to call deep, long-period, high-frequency events. Because, personally, I have not seen any other explanations as to what the heck they are. I have forgotten to email the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. They might be able to help out on this, because I really don't know what they were caused by. Let's go down. I have the data. I have not put out a blog post of it, but I will show you the older ones that occurred in January. Do you remember when I was talking about in January, there were these strange seismic events. Let's go down. That's not it. Right here. Okay. You see on the heli quarter on HTCD, which is in Hawaii, I forget exactly where, but these showed up on all the stations in the area, guys. See these events right here. Notice how it looks like some big surface event, right? There's no way that's a real seismic event, right? Wrong. That's actually a real seismic event. And so is this, and so is this. And they were labeled by USGS as other events. Now, remember, I analyzed it. These are from five select stations from the southern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii all the way to the northern tip. And you could tell it showed up on all the stations I selected. Again, here's a slideshow of the heli quarters from around the area showing how it showed up on all the seismic stations. So it's not surface noise. Look at that long period event, guys. That's a long period event. But you would expect the frequencies to be low if it's a long period event, right? Well, that's not true. Look at this. Look at the spectrogram plot. Now, I've already shown this in other videos. These strange, strange, strange events that lasted almost 40 minutes in some cases. The smaller events lasted probably only like 25 minutes or so. But this one lasted almost 40 minutes. I don't even know what the heck they could be. A smaller one did occur after the magnitude 5.5 hit Hawaii just a few days ago. So I thought that was very strange. And what are these? And they're always occurring deep, around 40 kilometers or so, near the Loihi Seamount off the coast. So I'm still trying to figure out what the heck these could be, because they are still appearing, guys, still. And I don't know. I don't know what they could be. It's very confusing, because I've never seen a deep, long period, high frequency event that can last almost 25 to 40 minutes. That's pretty strange. Pretty strange. Again, all of this stuff is shown on my website. I still have yet to put out the blog post showing the most recent deep long period high frequency event at Hawaii. 
but I'm also going to contact HVO about that. Okay, so let's go to the webcam. Here's the most recent webcam as of 12.25 p.m. Pacific time. I think there's a little bit of lag because it says right here 8.44 uh, Hawaiian time, which I believe right now would be 9.25 Hawaiian time. So that's probably like maybe 40 minutes of a delay. That's a big delay. I don't know why it would be like that. But let's see, did it refresh? And no, it did not. I don't know why it's not refreshing. Hopefully it didn't blow up. <laughs> Okay, so Hawaii, we do have 12 earthquakes. We do have two that just struck just in the past few hours in, on Mauna Loa, actually. Let's zoom in. Let's go to terrain real fast. Go to terrain. Yep, right on Mauna Loa, right on the flanks. Actually, right in the center. Never mind. A few other earthquakes spread throughout the area. It seems, see this, 1.8, 35 kilometers. 2.0, 44.8 kilometers. I bet you anything, these events are those strange deep long period high frequency events. But let's not take my word for it. Let's take a look at the seismic data and see if these characteristics have the same characteristics as these events right here. They're not going to be as strong, but they're going to look very similar. Surprisingly, they are not reporting this. Whoops, I forgot to zoom in. Again, they are not reporting this. We have PPLD near the southern coast of the Big Island of Hawaii, right on the coast, actually, which is usually the closest seismic station to detect these strange, deep, long-period, high-frequency events. I was thinking this was surface noise at first because none of the events in this long-period event were reported, and beforehand they have been. But it, when you take a look at uh, o OTLD, I believe it is. Here, let's go take a look at that in just a second. Um... 319, right about, it starts when? About 808 UTC, or 806 UTC. Okay, let's check out the other seismic station in the area to make sure that this is not a surface event. Okay, so here we have station OTLD. So, let's take a look at this and see if we can find it. If we don't, oh well. All right, let's go to the spectrogram if it'll allow me. Okay, so it's barely showing much. Let's see, 806 starts right about here, ends about 824, right? Let's go here, let's zoom out, let's go right here, go to the spectrogram, from 8.06 to 8.24, with a small little burst right before 8. Let's go over here, at, check this out, at 8.06, ending at about 8.24, with a small little burst before 8. Okay, so, it did detect this event, right here, this deep, long period, high frequency event, which was much smaller and much weaker than the other ones that were to occur in the area. Barely even mentionable, it's so small. But it did happen. And they have been happening, I'm going to say, once per day now. Uh, don't take my word for that, I might be wrong on that, but it's just been happening way too much lately, guys. Been increasing like crazy ever since the three largest ones were detected in late January which I still have yet to contact the HVO about. And they reported them. They reported them, so, you know, they're not fake. They're definitely real. Again, we have OTLD. We just proved that that was not surface noise. That was really a deep, long-period, high-frequency event, what I call deep, long-period, high-frequency events, DLP HFs. <laughs> so, again, this is on the southern rim of Kilauea, farther north of PPLD that I just showed. Okay, so I just want to take a quick look at some of the events today. Let's go to the spectrogram first. Or do we see any low frequency events? Not really. Possibly some low frequency tremor here and there, but that's to be expected to kill away. That's nothing crazy. I mean, low frequency tremor, harmonic tremor, volcanic tremor, whatever. That's like happens every day pretty much. But we've had some earthquakes, some smaller events, nothing too major, nothing too major. Uh, after the magnitude 5.5 on March 13th, I believe it was, they did have a few rock falls and sulfur deposits are now growing. And speaking of that, so that's it for Hawaii, but I real quick want to check, have they done the update yet? Have they done, the, they have not done the update yet. Okay, March 12th was when they put out the last update, which was before the magnitude 5.5. I want to see their take on the magnitude 5.5. Watch, they're not even going to men mention it. I really hope they mention it, but I have a feeling they're not going to. Sulfur deposits are forming in the new Howie Mau Mau crater. This was taken on March 13th. Again, the magnitude 5.5 occurred then. Don't know if you could see in the camera, but there is some yellowing right there. That is sulfur coming out of the volcano. And then there on 823 local time, March 13th, 2019, the upper part of a goalie along the western wall of the Howie Mau Mau crater failed, producing a rock fall. 
Listen to this. This rockfall was likely triggered by instability of the talus slope caused by water that has been trickling out of a round hole in the cliff face since July 2018 when the steep gully first formed. What? Wait. They would automatically assume that when it just had a magnitude 5.5 and inflation was starting to occur again. Uh, are you, uh, did they check this out or are they just saying it was water? I mean, they could be right. Maybe it was water. But it's strange how it occurred pretty much right when the earthquake occurred and right when inflation was increasing. So that could be the reason. I don't know. Also, let's go to the... Okay, the, that was Hawaii. Let's go to California real quick. Cali has been seeing some earthquakes as usual, some swarming. Yellowstone did see some swarming. I'll get into that in just a second. Near where I live, actually, there was a magnitude... Magnitude 2.9. North, 9 kilometers northeast of Bryant, Washington, 11.5 kilometers in depth. I believe this occurred late last night, maybe around midnight or a little bit later, something like that, but I did not feel it. I live right here in this area right down there, and this is where the earthquake occurred right here. Again, a magnitude 2.9 at 11.5 kilometers in depth. Let's check out the event page just real quick. Okay, 23 people reported feeling it. Let's see where the people were. All around the epicenter. So probably down here where I live, uh, probably people didn't feel it. So let's check out the seismic data. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just go to the waveforms, shall we? Let's see, magnitude 2.9. This is the magnitude 2.9 right here. From the closest seismic station and the distance seismic stations. I like how PNSN puts out many of the neighboring seismic stations. And all in order, too, from the closest seismic station to the farthest one that they picked. And you can see they have marked the PNS wave arrivals. So if you ever have trouble finding the PNS wave arrivals, of course this isn't the only tool you should use to learn it. But I found out it's very helpful to look at these, these PNS and waveform plots. Very helpful if you're trying to learn PNS wave arrivals. Now let's go back and back and back and back. <laughs> okay, the last thing I want to talk about today is there was wait let's see if there's anything else that occurred while i've been talking no no just that earthquake there okay okay so let's go to yellowstone yellowstone has been so quiet lately guys i mean maybe there have been some microquakes here and there near maple creek maybe near yellowstone lake but i mean nothing major guys very very tiny seismicity i mean just ridiculously tiny but we did have a couple earthquakes today Largest being a magnitude 1.4, 3.2 kilometers in depth. That's at 11.07 UTC. Let's refresh this and see if that is where I think it is. Let's scroll down real quick. Let's go to YLT. Let's see, 11.07 would be down here. We did have a tiny, 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 tiny swarm. Very teeny, teeny, whiny, tiny, weeny, teenies. Okay, let's go. Let's check out. So they did occur near Shoshone Lake. And if you're wondering, just go to my Seismic Events drop-down menu on my website and click West Thumb Rapid Fire Events, um, or whatever it says for West Thumb on my uh, website, and it will show you a lot of the earthquake swarms and a lot of hundreds of plots for a lot of the rapid fire earthquake swarms that occur around here. So Shone Lake and Lewis Lake, which are these two lakes right here, have seen some good-sized rapid fire swarms lately. Uh, not lately, I'm just going to say in the past few years. I believe it was in November 2016, there was the largest one in this area, I believe. You'll have to go check out my page for that. Um, okay, so magnitude 1.4, negative 0 0.3, wow. And then a magnitude 1.1. Let's see what the closest seismic station was to this event. I'm going to guess. I'm going to venture a guess. I'm going to say Borehole 944 or Seismic Station YDD. 944 or YDD, let's see. Drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. Oh. Oh my god, I'm right. All of them. Ha <laughs> YDD and Borehole 944 in that order, too. Ha <laughs> ha. That's pretty funny. Okay, so let's go to Iris. And let's do WY, YDD, 01, HHC. Now, if you are only using the online web recorders from assistingon.org, YDD will confuse you. You're probably like, what? There's a station YDD? Yes, it's right between YLT and Borehole 944. Right between these two. But you would never know that if you only monitored this. That's why you should actually monitor seismic data. I think that's a good idea. 
let's close out these files open file and here it is right here let's check out the dominant frequencies of today's teeny tiny weeny whiny earthquake swarm poor earthquake swarm i'm not being nice to it poor guy he's just too small press ok oh let's add a frequency filter shall we high pass and do 0 0.6 with 8 power there we go okay so here's an earthquake from earlier at 635 utc which i believe was let's zoom out 635 oh yep it's this one right here magnitude 1.1 at 2.2 kilometers in depth kind of having a hard time believing that because of the amplitude count and look at the pns waves guys they're a little too spread apart but you know i'm not a professional seismologist so they may be correct okay let's go here let's zoom out any low frequency events there's a little tiny earthquake there let's move forward move forward not seeing much not seeing much background noise background noise background noise background noise nope 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 oh and then we have a couple little teeny tiny microquakes there all have high frequencies more teeny tiny microquakes 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 and then we have at 1107 did they report this one yet 1107 that was the magnitude 1.4 at 3.2 kilometers in depth but i think there were more earthquakes that should have been reported especially these two right here those definitely should have been reported uh and then look at this they are not reporting these right here aha here's where we see most of the energy for today's rapid fire swarm again the recent rapid fire swarms at yellowstone have been extremely tiny only going to about 6,000 amplitude count at the max. Looks like about three events occurring in rapid succession within about, let's see, 11, 36, 13, and 11, 36, 32. Only in what, like 20 seconds or so? You can see all of them right there. Let's go back to the spectrogram. Not seeing any low frequency tremor or low frequency earthquakes, which is a good sign. And then nothing. As of the most recent data stream from Yellowstone, as of 12.40 p.m. Pacific time, March 19th, 2019, Let's check it out. Most recent data stream. Not seeing much. Could be something increasing there, but little teeny tiny guys. Teeny tiny teeny. Okay, so nothing too major going on at Yellowstone. Still, there appears to be a battle going on between uplift and subsidence. Nothing too major. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. The ETS uh, episodic tremor and slip event has ceased. It has stopped, but it could start back up again at any time. Again, here's the most recent view of Kilauea Caldera. Let's see if it'll refresh. Still saying 8.44 for the 19th. It's not refreshing. It has not refreshed for over an hour. They better not be getting rid of this camera. I'm not going to be happy about that. Okay, so let's go to the current alerts for Kilauea. Let's see if they did it yet. They have not done the update yet. Just keep an eye out for their update and see if they talk about the magnitude 5.5. They might. Looks like Old Faithful is erupting a little bit. All right, well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Remember, I'm not going to be putting out as many videos and blog posts um, as I used to for the next month or so because there's a lot of stuff I got to get done. But still show your support, and I'm still going to be around, especially if any major swarms occur. i definitely going to report to you guys. I'll definitely let you guys know if anything uh, concerning may occur. Also, don't forget about my GPS deformation video if you want to learn how to create your own charts because the online GPS charts are great for seeing multiple years. But I wanted the ability to see multiple weeks or multiple months. And in order to see multiple weeks or months on the online charts, it's very hard. You can barely see any significant change or at all, really. Because the pot, I mean, they contain, what, over a decade within one pot? So I wanted the ability, uh, the ability excuse me, to create my own, you know? And I figured out how to do that. The video is, I believe, two videos before this one. You just have to go to my channel and click videos. Don't forget to check out my website. God bless, and I'll be back later. Let me know what you think.